the harrowing scenes from the movie Gravity, the Oscar-nominated Hollywood thriller that brought the attention to the dangers for astronauts when they step outside the International Space Station. Hello, everyone. I'm Michelle Franzen in New York. That danger was all too real for American astronauts Rick Mastracchio and Mike Hopkins when they had to make the dangerous trip to repair the cooling system on the ISS back in December. But that mission was a success. And they are both joining us now for a unique look into life in space. Guys, thank you for joining us. I just wanted to get this out of the way, right well, off you. the bat. From what you've seen in the movie Gravity, is that something that could actually happen, a robotic arm breaking off, leaving you untethered out in space? Well, of course, things can happen in space. Things go wrong. There's always risk. There is danger. That's that's definitely true. But uh, you know, it was a movie. Uh, they over dramatize things. They uh, the the actors overreact to situations. We train for a lot of off nominal situations, and if something goes wrong, we stay very calm and we run procedures and we work with the ground to uh, you know to recover whatever goes wrong. So. Uh, the, the movie Gravity was a very exciting movie. It was great to watch, but it is uh, obviously uh, not very realistic. And, Rick, you're a spacewalk veteran, but you had some trouble with your suit during one of the EVAs. Is that adrenaline pumping every single time? Well, whenever you're out doing a spacewalk, uh, you definitely have heightened uh, alertness and heightened awareness of where you are and what you're doing. Uh, so, but you also remain very calm because, like I said, we trained this uh, many times. I've done uh, many spacewalks now. I've trained many, many times uh, in Houston in the large swimming pool. So if something goes wrong, we have procedures. We work them with the ground, like I said before. And, uh, but every once in a while, something does get your attention. If you get an alarm on your suit or something goes wrong, it definitely gets your heart pumping a little bit. And, Mike, want to ask you a question, too. Do you ever get a chance to sort of take in the moment when you're out there, or are you just too busy and too nervous? No, actually, there were uh, several times when we had uh, we had time to just look around and, and see the Earth going by, and, and it was actually amazing, truly incredible, because for the first time, you get to see the Earth passing by without any obstructions, without having to look out a, a window. Uh, with the frame around it and all of that. So uh, we were certainly very busy, but there are times when you need to just uh, slow down and pause, and uh, maybe there's uh, you're waiting on a step that the ground needs to take uh, with the system or something of that nature. So we had a few moments to look around. Very good. Now, there's been an interesting video that's been making the rounds uh, from one of your colleagues, Katie Coleman, showing us how the toilet works, all that stuff, you know, that everyone has questions about in space using M&Ms. That doesn't look too comfortable, but it does represent what you guys have to go through. Is there a question? Well, yeah, so the, the systems up here, uh, like the like the toilet and all of that, um, it, it's certainly a little bit different than, than what we use down on Earth, but uh, it does work pretty well, but it also takes a, a lot of maintenance to keep it going. So, um, you know, that's one of those things that if anything does go wrong with it, it, it takes priority on getting fixed. Now, of course, you've been out there doing all sorts of repairs, but there's also experiments you are doing up there for students on Earth. One of them involves an ant farm. What happens if those ants kind of escape that area? Well, the, yeah, the ants were obviously encased in a, uh, in a container and unable to escape, but... Uh, you know, if they got out, I guess it would be our job to catch them and uh, <laughs> and, and uh, corral them back up. But uh, luckily, uh, none of them es escaped. I know. All those things you have to think about and all those questions we have here, some of them seem very silly. But uh, I know that your space there is very limited. So how are you dealing with the garbage issue at the ISS? Yeah, actually, that's a that's a fantastic question and very relevant to uh, what just happened. So yesterday, uh, we actually released the Cygnus uh, Orbital One vehicle, 
And that vehicle, uh, about a month ago, brought up a bunch of supplies. It brought up food, clothes, experiments, brought up the ants. Uh, but when it left uh, yesterday, it took away all of our trash. And so it's uh, it's a great day here on, on station because it's nice and clean. There's hardly any trash around. Uh, it smells really good. And, and actually, I think as we're speaking right now, Orbital is uh, <laughs> Orbital 1 is, is probably getting close to going into the atmosphere. You know, Mike, let's stay with you. It looks like you've been trying to bring some new life to the ISS, but it hasn't seemed to work out, some of those experiments with the plants. Yeah, that's right. I, I was able to bring a few seeds up with me, some pumpkin seeds, some sunflower seeds, and it's pretty amazing how easy it is to, to get them started, to get them to germinate. And, and uh, But then after that, unless you've got the right kind of light, unless you've got the right kind of food, um, it, it's not very easy to keep them going. And so that's that's been pretty tough. I can I can make them last for about uh, about three weeks to, to six weeks or so, but, but then after that, they just they wilt away and, and die on me. pushing those hydroponics. So can either of you describe an average day on board the ISS? Of course, we don't normally have a chance to go up there and see that. So give us an idea of what you guys go through on a daily basis. Okay, well, we wake up fairly early. We get about an hour to eat breakfast and get uh, ready for work. First thing in the morning after that is we have a meeting with the uh, ground folks, and they kind of give us our schedule for the day. And that schedule includes three basic things, a lot of exercise, about two and a half hours of exercise, a uh, certain amount of maintenance of the space station if we have to uh, do some maintenance on the uh, on the toilet or any other systems. And But the biggest part of it will be science. Today I was uh, working in this glove box right here burning small samples to see how a fire and flames re react in space or behave in space. So it's uh, most of our day are, is, uh, is set with experiments and science, but then of course we have uh, maintenance and we have a lot of exercise so that we can walk when we get back to Earth. And back to Mike, you're about ready to come down in March, and your schedule could actually be moved up a little bit because of too much snow. What's going on with that? Yeah, actually, we were scheduled to return on the 12th of March, but I, um, as of right now, that's been moved to the 11th of March, and basically because of where we're going to land. So we were originally going to land in the northern part of Kazakhstan, which uh, still has a lot of snow there. And so for the search and rescue folks and for all of those to be able to, to get us out of the vehicle safely once we touch down, we've moved to a southern landing zone. And just due to the orbital mechanics and all of that, uh, that means we're going we're gonna, to uh, depart the station a day earlier and land a day earlier. Well, you know, something like, I don't know, a billion people are watching the Oscars on Earth. Are we also going to have two viewers from space rooting for gravity, perhaps, for the Oscars? I don't think we're going to be watching it uh, live, but uh, we'll probably uh, ask uh, Houston maybe to uplink it for us or at least give us the results of uh, all the movies that won the awards. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how gravity does. Fantastic. Well, astronauts Rick Mastracchio and Mike Hopkins, thank you so much for joining us and giving us a unique look and a link to the International Space Station. You, of course, can get a complete recap right here on abcnews.com. For now, I'm Michelle Franzen in New York with this ABC News Digital. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you.